you tell me when. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. During the, dis during the declared emergency, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx and online digital platform and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and in-person attendance limitations. My name is Isaac Laloz and I'll be chairing the hearing. Panel members participating today via WebEx and can be seen and heard are Ms. Sankar, Mr. Bartolo, and Mr. Klassen. City, city staff will be, assi will be assisting us throughout the meeting, including moderating the WebEx platform. And with us today, Dan Antonacci, who is the Deputy Secretary Treasurer, Adam Wells, and Amir Nissan. Participants who are registered in advance will be able to, to make the presentation to the committee using the said WebEx. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. These participants will be connecting either by their computer, a phone, a tablet app, or by telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry, and when your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. Only committee members will be participating by video. Any registered speaker will be participating by audio only. We ask that you also mute your devices until you're called on to speak. For all those waiting online to speak, please make sure you call with the same number you originally registered with. Calling with a different number, you will not be able to speak on the item. For land acknowledgement, we acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Weda peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Section 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the zoning bylaw, permission to extend or alter legal non-conforming uses, and consent to serve a property to, in, to, in, to make two, lo two laws. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision on a committee they must make must send an email a request by email please ensure that you include your name address and email address because committee of adjustment and the t lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by by email only if you do not agree with the decision of the committee decisions may be appealed to the toronto local appeal body known as t lab or in some limited circumstances to the local appeal to the local planning appeal tribunal known as LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing today will be as follows. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. When an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. When the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions or take the matter directly for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when the five minute mark is reached. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make presentation. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to receive a notice are informed of the changes. 
then individuals either in support or in opposition to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker at the end of their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant agent has the chance to address only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of the discussion and the application will be taken into committee for a decision. Now, I don't see any minutes for approval today. For, uh, for this morning session only, staff and members, any conflict of interest to declare? None declared. And uh, I don't have any deferrals for this morning session. And uh, Mr. Secretary, are there any files to close? No, Mr. Chair, there are none. Thank you. No. Okay, so we uh, will start with application number one, which is 3544491, and then 5760 Mobile Drive. And we have here one uh, person registered who is the agent, and there is no other person registered here. Mr. Martin Randall, are you there? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. I'm here. Okay. Could you please state your name and address for the record? Sure. Martin Rendell. I'm the agent for the uh, the owner. My address is 35 Delburn Drive, Toronto. Thank you. So we have here a request for for consent, and uh, and the application for the variances. So there is no other one to speak. But we we'll leave you. We we would like to have a, a five minute presentation in order to treat the whole application on block. So could you please give us a, a presentation here for the severance and the three uh, variances requested? Thank you. I'll give you, the, the, um, I'll give you the five. The, the consent application involves um, the creation of a prop. First of all, backing up, the proposed development is a new office building at 57 to 60 mobile drive for the Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation. Mr. Randall, could you please, could you please see you speak too close to the uh, microphone and it's echoing. See if you can adjust that, please. Okay. You're okay, we don't hear you now. Is that better? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, the, the proposed development involved with this applications is a new office building for the Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation uh, on the property at uh, 57 to 60 Mobile Drive. The consent application arises because all of the properties before you today are under a, the same ownership Therefore, the titles have merged and uh, the consent is required to separate 57 and 60 mobile drive from the other properties, uh, primarily for the purpose of financing the, the new office building. The consent also involves a number of easements for underground servicing, and that's detailed in my submission letter to you. We've worked closely with uh, engineering construction services to identify those easements and you have received from uh, engineering construction services, their comments and support of the, the consent application with respect to the, the easements existing and proposed on the properties here related to the consent. The minor variance application arises because this area remains under the old North York zoning bylaw 7625. It hasn't been brought into the new harmonized City of Toronto bylaw. So the variances relate to standards from that bylaw. And as uh, listed in the notice in your materials, the variances deal with three standards. The first one deals with the amount of landscaping in the required minimum front yard of the zoning bylaw. 
And in this case, the uh, zoning bylaw limits that to 15, 50%. In this case, it will be 75%. And I can advise the committee members that parallel with this application, we currently have a site plan application under review by the city, which under which the landscape plan um, is proposed and will be approved. And I can advise the committee that the amount of landscaping proposed within the required front yard, as well as the overall property, um, has not received any objections from uh, city staff. And again, in my submission to with the application, it was my view that a matter of landscaping is more sensitively and appropriately decided through a landscape plan designed for the actual property and development as opposed to a generic um, 30 year old zoning bylaw standard. The other two variances relate again to uh, firstly the amount of parking provided. And here, uh, 156 parking spaces are proposed for the development, which complies with the heart, the requirements under the harmonized zoning bylaw, but the old North York bylaw has a higher parking requirement. It would require 198 spaces. Um, again, we're, uh, and, and you've received a review from transportation services, having no objection to the use of 156 parking spaces to serve through the development. You will know that um, this area in the interim, since the North York bylaw was passed, uh, now has the Eglinton Connects LRT, highly transit accessible station. And again, the in our view and in view of city staff, the amount of parking proposed is sufficient and adequate to serve the development. The last variance relates to the length of one of the loading spaces. And again, the North York bylaw only had one dimension or one type of loading space and one dimension for that. The development here provides um, several types of loading spaces. And again, the dimensions of the loading space, the six meter length complies with bylaw 569-2013, which in my submission is the more modern standard the city is using and we're simply um, asking that that be applied to this development. In terms of the uh, the Planning Act test for the consent, I'm satisfied that it meets all of the relevant criteria of the Planning Act for the approval of the consent. And with respect to Section 45, one of the Planning Act for the variances, the variances, in my opinion, meet all four tests. The official plan permits an office building, the zoning bylaw permits an office building, the variances to these standards are desire are appropriate for the desirable development of the property. And lastly, there are no impacts on um, any properties. You have no objections from any other property owners in the area or from the city. So in my opinion, the variances are minor. Okay. Happy to okay. answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we have all those reports you mentioned. We have the staff report, TRCA, engineering, transportation, everything and the staff report has a condition for the standards for the condition for the uh, severance so you're okay with that standard conditions for the severance yes I, i've reviewed all the staff reports and are, okay. are, i'm content with the conditions okay i'll see if the members have any uh, questions any questions to this speaker please no then then i need uh, i need a motion Ms. Sankar, do you have a question or do you want to? Okay, please go ahead. No, I'm, I'm ready for a motion, Mr. Chair. Please go ahead. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I think that this application does meet the four tests as it's laid out. Um, I believe transportation has no objections. Uh, there was a, a TRCA report with no objections. Engineering just had its standard conditions as well as um, the staff report. And so for those reasons and seeing that there is a, 
uh, no one here to contest this application. I'm going to put forward a motion to approve uh, this application with the consent and variances, and it will be subject to the standard staff uh, report conditions of June 2nd, that staff report, as well as the engineering uh, conditions. And I, I see that um, uh, transport also had some conditions attached to it as well. So it'll be subject to that as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Second. Mr. Klassen, second. All in favor? Okay. Is your application is approved, Mr. Randall. And uh, the conditions, as you heard. Thank you. You heard the conditions, the standard conditions for the severance and the other uh, recommendations. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Number two, with the uh, 394 Woburn Avenue, Mr. We have here Mr. Uh, Robinoff. Are you there? Ah, uh, yes. Good morning, Mr. Okay. Robinoff. Here. So please, uh, Mr. Chair and members, before we go any farther, I'd like to let you know that the uh, local area resident that was wishing to participate is not on the call at this time. Okay, so we have just uh, just the uh, just the agent. Okay, Mr. Robinoff. Uh, did, did you did you state your name and address, please? Hi, uh, it's uh, Glenn Rubinoff, uh, Rubinoff Design Group, uh, 18 Gloucester Lane, Toronto. Okay, so we had uh, one person registered. They're not. You're only the only one, but um, we have some uh, some uh, conditions and changes uh, submitted by the staff report. So, can you please make a presentation of five minutes and cover those uh, changes that are requested? Uh, refusal of application uh, number of variances and the limits of the lot coverages. So, please cover that and we will treat it uh, together with the file uh, severance and, and, uh, uh, and uh, variances. So, please go ahead and I'll give you the, five, give you the usual five minutes. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, um, <clears throat> this is an application for uh, a lot severance and two new homes at uh, 394 Woburn. Um, and uh, if you, uh, if I can refer you to the uh, the area map that we provided, um, this is a, an application uh, which is very very similar to uh, the two homes right next door at 392 and 388, uh, which were before committee for similar variances. Um, um, and, and approved at that time. Uh, but this is an application for new homes where we have variances for, you know, fairly typical for the area here. Uh, we have uh, uh, a lot coverage variance, which has been adjusted. So the notice you have before you has the reduced lot coverage, which we had uh, proceeded with uh, based on uh, some discussion with uh, with the city, but also we um, we uh, uh, we also had some discussion about the variance for the three story. Now, um, I've spoken to the city to the city planning because three story houses are not unusual in this area. In fact, they're they're quite common. Um, Wolburn, in fact, the houses. Uh, all, uh, all three of them on the right hand side have all been approved that committee as a three story house. Uh, a little further down on Woburn on the other side of, uh, um, just trying to see what street that is, uh, also has, um, has been approved as three story houses. So these are not, yeah, these are, if you go through uh, further down, three, uh, 390, 392 have been, uh, uh, have been built and they're designed to uh, uh, to fit the lots. They're, they're compatible in terms of the massing and the scale of the home. If you look at the site plan, um, if I could ask you to go to the uh, site plan that we have um, for the area. Uh, or, sorry, my uh, the site plan for the property. You'll see that <clears throat> it's the same length as. Uh, as a home at 392 and 390. Um, and uh, the variances for setbacks <clears throat> are, are very typical for the area as well. 
uh, we're looking at the 0.45. So you see on the right hand side there, uh, uh, 392 is the same length. The garage we modified to bring it down in, in coverage. So the coverage includes uh, the coverage for the house as well as uh, as the detached garage in the back. Um, the um, you know the so I'll just go through the variances briefly. Um, so the the minor variances before you. Um, City planning had no concerns with regards to the other standards, but uh, other than the item they brought up about the definition of uh, or the uh, the variance for a three story. Uh, but in terms of uh, um, side yard setbacks, lot area, lot frontage, these are all um, items related to the um, to the uh, bylaw, um, and these are whole of lots. So just in terms of each house is actually on a lot. Originally, they were 25 foot lots, uh, and uh, the city at some point merged them because they had homes that were built on on both both parts. But they're not actually part lots; they're full lots. So it's also something that you know we're coming here today for a lot severance, but they're actually one lot per house um, or one house per lot. Um, the uh, Wall heights, the uh, the um, uh, other other setbacks, the uh, they're fairly typical for the area, and even the uh, I mean we have a lot of we did a lot of research before we went into this, and I, I think you'll find that there's this is not um, anything that's unusual for the area. I, I planning is only comment uh, with regards to the three story. Um, their, their only comment was with regards to the variance for three stories. But as I've said, it's 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 a policy they have. It's it's more of a policy than a specific concern about this lot. And uh, I've seen it where um, this this three story variance has been approved on the street, on the next street behind as well, and and in the area. And I don't think it's going to interrupt or, or, or have any negative impact on the on the neighborhood, considering uh, the next door, the three houses to the right and several houses on the street. But I think their policy is that if it's not the you know, majority of homes that they, they have a obligation to write on it. So um, that's really all that I, I picked up from it. OK, but I, <laughs> yeah, I guess okay. I so guess I'm finish I up. Guess yeah, I guess you passed your uh, thing. Okay, now, uh, yeah. yeah, the um, you mentioned the coverage. The coverage, fifty-two percent. What you're asking, that's what the staff is saying. But this will be will include thirteen percent for the ancillary uh, building. You're okay. That's with, right. That's you're okay with that, huh? Yes, yes, of course. And and that's that. If that's what I put down as a a reference that 13% of that lot coverage is specifically for the garage. Yeah, uh, we're fine with that. Uh, just I also want to point out that the coverage for um, for 392 is 52.8% for a similar garage. So they're a little bit more than what we're asking. And 484 was approved at 53.2% coverage. Again, we're not. It's not about the house. It's just about having a detached garage in back. Okay, so so you're not okay with the fifty percent limit on the other ones, huh? Well, it's just the, the I mean, there, you know, it's okay. It, so it, let's, it's see, okay. let's see what the members are saying for the three story as well. Now you cover the three story that there are lots of them on the street. So uh, how come you didn't discuss that with the staff uh, and they they're recommending to refuse? I, I did, I did discuss it with planning staff and she acknowledged that uh, that several homes on the street have been to committee and have been approved at committee, but this is a newer policy that they have. Uh -huh. It seems that the, the policy is more gener gener generated by, you know, uh, the majority of lots in the area. Um, okay, so let's see, still, what, let's see what yeah. the members say about that. Uh, any questions, uh, members? Mr. Bartolo. Uh, yeah, uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, can the applicant speak to the overall height of the proposed buildings versus the three stories? Because I see there's a variance for height here for about 10 centimeters, which is uh, obviously not that much. And, and how those two uh, kind of blend together or don't? Uh, yes. Um, so the um, there's two height variances, um, the old bylaw and the new bylaw. Uh, the old bylaw is taken from the crown of the road, which has a significant grade differential. So it's at uh, 10.9 because it's taken to, uh, there's a good difference of at least a meter uh, between where it's taken from to the midpoint of the roof. The new bylaw from established grade to the top of the roof is actually in compliance. So we're under 10 meters. So the variance that you have for overall height is really related to the old bylaw, um, but not the new bylaw. Is that was that your question? In, in regards to the, uh, um, you know, the uh, uh, the three story, it doesn't cover the entire home. It's a portion of the home, so there are some uh, terraces uh, in the front and in the rear. So the three stories, not the entire length of the home as well. It's a portion. Yeah, yeah. I can see that on the elevations and plans. I mean, a portion of the debate is, is the the three story uh, condition. But what I guess what you're saying is, yes, you're asking for three stories, but you're you're generally or just 10 centimeters over the permitted height, regardless of the number of stories. Is that correct? Uh, that's that's right. That's right. That's right, and then there's many, many, I mean, you know, again, we look at the area, we look at the redevelopment that's gone in the area, and I believe that this is no, uh, this is not pushing the limits of what has been built in the area. I think it's compatible with what's next door as well, and and uh, up, and, up and down the street. Um, you know, the, the, um, you know, the location of the, of, of the homes uh, is, you know, it's a, when you have uh, narrow lots, you, you 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 can't really you don't want to go back further, so you look at the, trying to work in the space you know above rather than going back further than that. But I, I feel like the the differential is minor in comparison to what the bylaw requires. Any other questions? And with oh. ten centimeters is about four four inches. Yeah. yeah. So your your uh, your new proposed lot widths you're saying are in generally keeping with the neighboring properties. Oh yeah, uh, 25 foot lot. Like I said, each each um, lot is actually a whole lot. So we're not right. dividing a lot. It's actually uh, each of them. Uh, 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 let me see if I have it here uh, on the survey. You'd, you'd be similar to 392 and 390, which are exactly yeah yeah lot 146 and lot 145. So each of them kind of covers it. Uh, each each proposed lot is actually a whole lot. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's all my questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're okay. Any any other questions? No. Okay. If there is no more questions, can I have a motion there, please? Ms. Sankar. Yes. Um, yes, through you, Mr. Chair, you know, I, I've heard the explanations provided by the applicant here today, um, despite uh, what the staff report has indicated. And I think also uh, the questions ensued by my colleague, Mr. Um, Bartolo, I, I tend to accept the explanations provided by the applicant here today in response to those. So for that reason, and seeing that there's no one here to contest this application, I'm I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application and I'll make it subject to um, so I'll approve the consent and variances and I'll make it subject to number one forestry and number two um, the portions of the tw May 28th staff report that states um, for part one and part two that the overall lot coverage be limited to the 52%, which includes the ancillary structure garage, which represents 13.03% of the lot area. So that would be the condition attached. Very good. And uh, did, you mention, you. did you mention the uh, conditions for severance? 
Uh, yes. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Mr. Bartolo, second. All in favor? Okay. Uh, unanimously approved based on those conditions, okay? Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, application three, which is 20 Parfield Drive. And we have here um, Mr. Uh, Tang Choi. Are you there? Um, yes, it's Tang Chao here. Um, I'm the agent. The agent. Now we have there Zeng. My address, 115 Autumn okay. Grand Circle. Okay. And we have there Zeng Wing. He's he or she, he's the owner, right? We have yes, he's the owner. He's the owner. Okay, so who wants to speak? You or the owner? I will speak on you will. Okay, you have five minutes. Could you please make us a presentation? You got here the uh, the second floor, four variances and two letters oh. support. So please make a make a presentation. You have five minutes. Yes, Anna, the owners would like to add a second story to the existing. Um, the, the the new the new ex zero walls for the second sit directly on the existing wall on the ground floor, and that re results in uh, variance number one. Um, for variance number two and three. We want to ensure that uh, we have the adequate height for the new elevator installation. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Zeng, are you cutting off there? Could you please speak to the microphone and clearly because you're cutting off? Do you hear us? Um, can, you, you, uh, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I guess. Um, so, yes, um, for the for variances number two and three, uh, we want to be sure that we have enough height for the new elevator installation. Okay, do you want to continue or you are you finished? And you for uh, variance. Okay. Uh, for for variance number one is because the new the new territory zero was it on the existing ground floor wall. Um so um it is existing. Um that's, that's why we get uh, variance number one. Um so, um, which will need to explain furthermore uh, on the project itself. I'm sorry, we're having a hard time hearing you. Can, can you can, hear? Can you please speak slowly and not to stop because we have a hard time hearing you? Mr. Chair, I think they're done their presentation. Okay. Uh, can you hear me better now? What did you say? Uh, Mr. Chair, I think they are done their presentation me? overall. They're what? I think they're done their presentation overall. Um, so if committee wants to ask any questions, maybe it's the best time for that. Okay. C can you remove that thing, please? Any questions? Can I have a motion there, please? Mr. Klassen? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. After examining the application, it is minor. There, uh, there isn't any opposition to it. And uh, I'd like to move to uh, uh, approve the application. Thank you. Second. 
Mr. Bartolo, second, all in favor? Okay, uh, your application is approved, okay? Thank you very much. I couldn't hear a word she said. Number four, which is 406 Drury Avenue, application number four. Uh, here we have, we have uh, one, two, three, three uh, more speakers beside the agent. So we'll have the agent, Mr. Rubinoff, are you still there? Mr. Chair and members, I'd like yeah. to bring to your attention that the three area residents um, are not on the call at this time. All of them. And if they are, they have not called in using the phone number that they, um, they said they would use. Okay. Um, so yeah, at this time, there are the three, the three uh, participants from the neighborhood are not on the call. Um, be it uh, through WebEx or on the phone numbers that they said they'd call in on. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Robinoff, are you still there? Yes, I am. Thank okay, you. the uh, the three uh, speakers here, uh, they're not, we don't see them, and uh, maybe they'll show up while you're giving your presentation. And uh, so please go ahead. Uh, again, we have the staff report. Uh, Asking to refuse uh, variance number five and conditions on type on the site plan, and uh, and the councillor, we have a letter from the council supporting the two in support of the two items above. Yeah, Mr. Chair and members, I can confirm one of the area residents is on the call now. Okay, okay. So we have we have another uh, speaker here. So please make your presentation, and then we'll have the other speakers. Okay. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone, again. Uh, so this is an application for a new home at uh, 406 Drury Avenue. Um, I did read the staff report. I did have some discussions with the uh, with the area planner, and I, I have read the correspondence from, from the neighbors with regards to the concerns expressed. Um, at this time, I'm going to withdraw variance number five because of the opposition to it. It's, uh, it's in relation to the wall height and in relation to the style of the home. Um, I understand just from the feedback that there's a concern about the wall height and the, and the impact of it. So we're gonna, at this point, withdraw variance number five. So variance number five is no longer before you. Um, and in consideration of that, we'd like to proceed with the understanding that as per the staff report that the uh, site plan drawing, uh, that it be tied to that, let me just go through the site plan drawing uh, just to just to uh, explain the um, the reasoning and such. So we have two side yard setback variances. Um, both of them are for a partial portion of the house. They're not for the entire side on either side. Uh, the portion facing uh, uh, Chelmsford, um, there's a variance for 1.37 meters. But as you can see, it's just for a bump out. We are addressing the corner of of, uh, of Chelmsford. It's just a, a small bump out area uh, on, on the left hand side here, um, and that's partly in relation to creating a uh, you know a, a something that's attractive that, that addresses that that corner. Uh, but the uh, the majority of that side is at 1.83 um, setback. Um, and the um, so that's relation to two variances uh, related on that side. The other, uh, which is variance number six and number seven, the other side, variance number nine, um, is in relation to the um, uh, is in relation to the east side yard setback, where we're asking 1.54 meters. Uh, again, that's for a portion. Uh, for the garage portion, um, and beyond that, we uh, increase the setback to 2.48 meters, uh, or 2.47 meters. So, you know, in, in an averaging point of, of view, we're really we're asking for a variance of uh, 0.26 meters. Um, you know, uh, we're at uh, five feet, and the requirement is. Uh, five foot 11. Um, again, that's just for that portion at the front. 
Uh, if I can point out that the uh, adjacent neighbor at 404, who was concerned about it, their their setback is at 1.64. Uh, so it's a different uh, at the, a difference of about 10 centimeters in terms of setbacks to the property line. And again, we're just beyond that. We we exceed well exceed the setback uh, um, requested or required for that area. Um, the um, Overall height under the old bylaw is again related to the. Uh, it's again related to the the way in which it's calculated from the road to the midpoint. Um, but the overall um, height is in compliance with the bylaw, and now that we're bringing down the wall height, uh, that would actually probably bring down that that uh, midpoint height as well. But it would effectively uh, put us back into a. Uh, compliance with with regards to the new bylaw in all respects with regards to the wall height and the overall height. Um, in terms of uh, lot coverage, we're requesting 32% coverage, which staff is 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 fine with. Again, it's not unusual for the area to request a small coverage variation. Um, and I think that's really all I wanted to bring up at this point. So, uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have one uh, area resident that uh, uh, finally came here. Could you tell me which one is that, Mr. Moderator? Uh, members and Chair, uh, Z Fan is uh, available to participate. Fan Jiang, yeah? Okay. Uh, hello, Mr. Fan Jiang, are you there? We have here Fan Jiang. Hello? Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, we are the owner of 404 Jewelry Avenue. Okay, can you please and, uh, can, sorry? Can, you, can you please tell us your name and your address and what's your concern? Here? Okay, okay. So my name is Tian Fan, and our address is 404 Jewelry Avenue. Okay, and so, uh, you're calling about this this uh, application here. 406 Drury, right? Yes. Okay, so you heard the agent is removing variance number five, which he, which it's below is to the height, which is eight. They were asking 8.89 meters, and now they removed. He removed that variance. Does not exist. Do you have any more uh, concern, please? So number five is removed. Yes. Okay. What about number nine? Well, you tell us what's your concern. The only change we made here, they removed number five. You tell us what you're concerned about nine and we'll move on. Yeah, I we have concerns about number nine. So tell um, us. Okay, because currently uh, the our property has a distance to the fence, to the board fence of uh, one point uh, 1.64 and 1.373. Uh, the uh, rear side is 1.64 and the uh, front side is 1.73. So if the 406 wants to uh, propose the setback to our um, to our yard, to our board fence, to 1.54, so in the future, uh, if we want to rebuild, which means the distance between the two buildings uh, is decreased, and we might need to move. Um, to the east. We might need to reduce our lot size or the width of the new building. So that's one of our concerns. Another concern of us is about the windows. Uh, we don't want any windows open on the exterior wall of the new dwelling that are facing the board fence because this will breach our privacy. So I finish. Okay, thank you. That's the only uh, concern. Let's, uh, let's see if uh, members have any questions to the speaker and we'll get the agent to respond. No? Yeah, Mr. Bartolo. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I'm not sure I understood the resident's concern about maybe it was just a little choppy, but was it about not being able to expand 
her building or build a future building? Yeah. That, that's what I understood. Yeah, I understood the same thing. The okay. variance is asking for 1.54 as compared to 1.8. So I, 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 don't, I don't understand what it means by building. She so can't build on the other side, but let, I think uh, the agent will, uh, will respond, but you still have any question on, for her or you want her to respond? Uh, no, I'll have one for the applicant to, at the end of his. Thank uh, you. Rebuttal. Yeah, we'll ask him to resp to respond that to what the concern is. Any other question for the speaker? Okay, okay, Mr. Robinov. Mr. <coughs> Mr. Robinov. Uh, yes. Okay. The um, Hi. okay the the uh, our members and we're asking about the. Uh, her concern about building on that side, which uh, which can you please explain it? Well, um, as I said earlier, there's only a portion of the building that's uh, about a foot closer than the bylaw permits. It's just for the garage to allow for us to get a driveway in. And we also, there's a tree in front, which we're trying to protect and save. So that's one of the reasons why we've shifted the garage over that foot to avoid impacting that tree um, but again it's only a difference of about a foot for that portion of that garage and that's one of the reasons why our uh, staff has asked us to tie it to the site plan the, the, for the rest of the side yard it well exceeds the bylaw so it shouldn't have any impact on any future development that they want to do there was also a concern they expressed in their letter about the windows overlooking perhaps a privacy that's a laundry room and a powder room it's not a bedroom it's nothing uh, really uh, where someone's going to be in there all day and, and looking out. So it's a privacy is pretty well being maintained throughout. Uh -huh. That's okay, it. That's all. Yeah. yeah. W what's the size of the lot? The uh, the width. Uh, the width of the lot. It's uh, eighteen point six nine meters. Uh, the lot. Okay. All right. So any any question for the speaker, Mr. Bartolo? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Variance number eight. Uh, it's a little strange. It reads, there may be an enclosed space below the front yard platform. There are reasons. Right? Uh, let me have a look. Sorry. Variance number eight. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's... Regarding the platform. Uh, rear yard platform. Of all that. So they're talking about the. Uh, it's a walkout. Um, from the basement in the rear uh, area. That's all it is. Um, the rear porch under the under the deck. Is that what we're referring to? Because um, that's there's a walk out there. There's no room or anything of that nature. Oh no, I know. I agree. It's just that the first line on on the yeah yeah. It's a there, means there, there may be an enclosed space below the front yard platform. Oh, beyond beyond the front yard. Um, uh, no, I mean, there's a cold room under the porch, but that's, that's all there is. It's a regular. Okay. Excavation. It's, it's like, cause there either is or there isn't. It's just straight. Yes, I, there isn't. Uh, uh, okay. No, um, no problem. You're okay. Uh, thank you. That's all. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Ms. Sankar, did you have a question? No. Okay. Okay. If no, uh, if there is no question, can I please have a motion? Ms. Sankar? Oh, I have two motions. I don't know. No, I think Mr. Bartolo had his hand up first, so go ahead. Yeah, which one won it? You you both at the same time. No problem. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I've, I've listened to the uh, evidence presented, and I understand the neighbor's concerns for privacy. Uh, however, I don't think a 11 inches of, of uh, width is going to make a difference in, in that respect. So I'm going to put forward a, a motion to uh, approve this application uh, subject to the uh, recommendation of uh, planning staff that it be uh, uh, tied to the site plan uh, as noted in the staff report. And, uh, and number five was removed, huh? Yeah, that, yeah, thank you. And with the removal of Eric's number five as noted earlier. Thank you. Yeah. And, and, and Ms. Sankar? Ms. Sankar, did you have any questions? No, sir, I'm sec I'm seconding the motion. Oh, second, okay, okay. All in favor? 
Okay, your application again is approved uh, unanimously, subject to the condition of the site plan and subject to the removal of variance number five. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Item number five, which is 72, a Catholic like Crescent. Uh, item number five. We have here one more uh, resi resident re re registered here, and we have the agent, Amrit, Amrit Pal Dansal. Are you there? Yes, I'm on the phone. Okay, can you please state your name and address? Yeah, my name is uh, Emma Paul Banso. I am the uh, agent for the applicant. Uh, address for the property is 72 Cuffley, uh, North York. Okay, thank you. We have uh, we have one more uh, speaker here, so please give us a presentation. You have five minutes. Yeah, thank you. So we're proposing uh, to rebuild um, uh, these existing dwelling here, demolish it, and put a new two-story. Um, for the family that's going to move in here, uh, who are the current owners. Um, we're asking for a few variances. Um, some of them are extremely minor in nature. Um, some of them require an explanation, and uh, it's mainly because to allow um, one of the occupants, um, the elderly, uh, for a wheelchair. Um, so there are a few spaces within the house um, that are triggering some of these uh, variances. Um, that require more depth and more length um, than the required um, bylaw requirements. So um, I'll just list the bylaws, uh, the, um, the variances that are, are requested here. So one of them is the, uh, the side yard setback um, where the bylaw requires 1.8. Um, we're providing 1.5 on one side and 1.2. However, if you're able to put up the site plan, um, we've taken into consideration where the neighbor to our left-hand side, his house or her house is um, further away from the property line. Um, so, you know, on that side, we're, we're using the 1.2. Um, on the opposite side, uh, at the very front, it's actually 1.63. Um, but uh, the property lines are not exactly straight. So as you go towards the rear, you're getting the, um, the 1.5. Um, and on that side, uh, the neighbor on 74 is uh, close to the property line. So, you know, we've kept it um, further away than the opposite side. Um, we're also asking for um, a, a platform um, a variance. Uh, I believe it's, uh, sorry here, oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, another one that we're asking for is the height where they're required 10, we're asking for 10.2. Um, lot coverage, 35% allowable, we're asking for a 2% uh, increase for 37. Um, I guess because of the two car um, driveway, well, we're short on landscaping by uh, by 10%. Uh, required is uh, 75, but we're proposing uh, 65. Um, we also have a small little balcony on the, on the second floor, um, just so someone can step out. Uh, it's not a very large balcony. Um, that requires a variance. Um, the two major ones um, that I, uh, I'm going to assume are, are are the building length and depth. Um, and again, um, this is really only because of um, a, a wheelchair accessibility. That's all I have. That's all you have. Okay, thank you. Yes. So let's uh, hear from the other speaker, and then we'll bring you back to answer the question. Here we have a name, Kenneth Mullen. Are you there? Is that the one? Uh, I, yeah. Could you please state your name and address for the records here? Hi, my name is Kenneth Mullen. I live at 62 Cuffley Crescent South. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Could you please tell us what's your concern about this application? And I'll give you the usual my can five minutes, OK? Perfect. I've uh, conversed with a couple of the neighbors in the, the neighborhood, and it just seems that this house is out of character, mainly because of the width of the house. And it's mostly because if you look at the houses in our neighborhood, everybody has a uh, driveway on the right hand side of their house. And this has given everybody the ability to drive into their backyard where they have a detached garage. If you look at this house, it's the first house that has the 
uh, garage on the left hand side. And if you look at the back of the house, the staircase empties out. So if I were living at the house next door, I would have a staircase that would come into my backyard and the side door would match my side door. So that is out of character with the neighborhood. Sorry about that. Yeah. In addition, the setback as talking about if we go to all of my neighbors and I were to sell my house and apply for the same variance, it would leave very little space in between the houses to drive a car. And so I've also submitted a written application. I don't care about the height. It's just the width of the house and the soft permeable landscaping and the fact that the garage is on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side and the entire visual appeal. But in all opinion, it's a beautiful house. I just don't agree with the two uh, width setbacks, the second balcony. And I believe the fact is, is that there was also two trees on the property that one was removed quite recently that I did not see in the arborist report. And I only know this because on the tree up to, on the street up until about last year, I was the only other uh, house that had a tree. And this one was removed about three weeks before the arborist report was taken. So I just want to point that out. That's all I have to say. That's all. Okay. So let's see if the members have any question. Any question for the speakers concerned? No. Okay. So we'll get back. Um, we get back with her uh, name, uh, Mr. Kenneth. Mr. Mullen, could you please respond to those uh, concerns? Me? Yeah. Well, the, you heard the uh, the objection from the. Mr. Chairman, you, Mr. Chairman, you're calling the wrong name. It's the agent we need to hear from. I yeah, oh, I, yeah. I made the concerns. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Bensal. Sorry. Okay. Okay, I was confused. Yeah, so please go ahead and, and respond to the concern of this uh, Mr. Uh, Mullen, whatever. Who, me? Mr. Bansal, you're the, you're the agent. Could you please respond to the concern mentioned by the gentleman who spoke against the application? Right. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the comments. Um, I understand the concerns as well. Um, Uh, out of character, I'm not too sure, but we're asking for zoning release. We're not asking for style release. Um, I, I've heard the comments. Uh, I don't have anything to say, really. Okay. Any question for this uh, speaker? Is the agent? No. Ms. Sankar? I'm sorry, I, I don't understand what you mean by you don't have anything to say. He's just said that your your home is out of character for the neighborhood about the garages being on one side versus the other, et cetera. Can you explain to us how that implicates your application? And I'm sure you must have something to say about that. Um, regarding the driveway, um, if it helps to flip it around, um, or more than one to do that. Um, I mean, swept the whole house around. Uh, regarding the setbacks, um, I mean, we're asking for the 1.2 on one side and the 1.6 on or 1.5 on the other. Um, I understand that it is out of character from the from the neighborhood, um, but. Uh, I don't know, I've kind of never been in the situation. We do have a two car garage. Um, I don't understand that your property or um, the garages are at the rear. Um, you know, we're asking just for a regular subdivision home uh, to be put on the lot. Uh, does it answer the question, Ms. Sankar? Um, yes, he's responded, and I, I'll take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Any any other uh, question? No? Okay. Can I have a motion then? Mr. Klassen? 
Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. This is obviously uh, uh, a complex situation because it, 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 it's the first property on that street to be redeveloped. Um, however, I think the variances are minor and there isn't objection from city staff. So I move to approve the application um, subject to urban forestry. And in regard to the driveway, I think that's a matter that there isn't a variance that's being requested. So I don't think we can comment on that. So I'll move to, uh, to approve it at the subject to urban forestry. forestry. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Mr. Bartolo, second. All in favor? Opposed? Ms. Sankar is opposing. And sir, your application is approved, subject to uh, forestry. Okay, thank you. Item number six, which is 300 York Mills Road, application number six. And here we have, we have uh, a number of speakers beside the agent. And the agent, could you please state your name and address, Mr. Uh, Trent? Mr. Chairman, yeah? Mr. Chairman, yeah. I believe all the speakers are related to the application. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Okay, Mr. Trent, are you there? Hi, uh, yes, my oh, name is Ms. Lynn Trent and um, I'm Okay, are you, uh, yes, are you going to be representing this or you want the other ones to, to, to participate? Who, who wants to speak on the application? No, I, I will be speaking. Thank you, you will. Thank you. Okay, so we have here. So my name yeah, could, could you just a second? We have here to convert the vacant into, I think we have one variance. And uh, let's ask this, the members, do we need the presentation here? Yes or no? Um, yes. I, uh, uh, I think it, it would be helpful to have a, a very short presentation. Thank you. Okay, so please go ahead and give us the presentation as to the merits of your application. Okay, thank you for the committee. Um, my name is Lynn Tran and I'm the business tenant of a unit in the subject site. I'm applying for a minor variance approval to support a commercial education center, which is a Kumon math and reading center. The site is located at the northwest intersection of Bayview Avenue and York Mills Road. The area has well-developed transit networks. Um, as the business tenant, we propose to operate a Kumon math and reading center in unit 2C on the ground floor, which has an area of 102 square meters. Uh, the Kumon Center will have no structural changes to the building and will only have minor interior renovations. According to the official plan, the subject site is defined as a mixed use area and surrounded by a large area of residential neighborhoods. According to the new citywide zoning bylaw number 569 2013, the site is de defined as a CR zone. And the site is also regulated by the former North York bylaw number 7625. While the new zoning bylaw allows education use, the old zoning bylaw has no such use. However, the new bylaw is replacing the old bylaw and it indicates that education use has been recognized as a desirable use in this area. The permitted use in the old bylaw is the only variance for this proposal. Um, so why is Kumon needed? Uh, Kumon is important and desirable because within a two kilometer radius, there are about 6,000 elementary students, but there are no other extracurricular educational services in the same area. Beyond tutoring, Kumon establishes a pattern of academic success 
sparks critical thinking and builds self-confidence in children. Students develop a positive attitude towards schoolwork and when they have a sense of achievement and have the ability to self-learn advanced topics. In addition, the majority of instructors hired at our centers are local high school students and university students. In many cases, we provide them with their first real and meaningful jobs. So in summary, the variance is minor in nature. The general intent and purpose of the official plan and the zoning bylaw are maintained. And the proposed use can be considered desirable and important for, for this area. There are no objections from the city and no impacts to other properties or tenants. Thank you for your time. Is there any questions? Thank you. Any question? I don't see the screen. Any question? No. Can I have a motion, please? Mr. Bartolo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application with no conditions. Thank you. Second. Ms. Sankar, any favor? Okay. Your application is approved. No conditions. Okay. Thank you. Application number seven, which is 119 Kelso Avenue. And uh, we have here uh, just, the speak, just the agent, uh, Nicole Forco. Are you, are you there? Hello? Yeah, could you please state your name and address for the records here? Sure. Um, so my name is Nicole Porco. I'm from Proland Landscape Construction, and it's 19 Kenview Boulevard in Brampton. Okay. We have. Uh, um, so we are. Yeah, okay. just, just a second, please. Uh, members, we have uh, four variances. Sure. No, no other speaker. Uh, we need, do we need presentation? No. Okay. If no, if we don't need presentation, do you have any questions for this uh, speaker or we go to motion? No questions. Okay. Can, yeah, there is a four, there are four, uh, four variances. The lot coverage was a little bit, uh, a little bit high, but uh, if you have no concern, can I have a motion, please? Yeah, Ms. Sankar. Through you, Mr. Chair, looking at this application and seeing that there is no uh, staff report, um, no one contesting it. Um, the lot coverage is a little bit higher, but in the, the parameter of the application, I'm willing to accept that. So I'll put forward a motion to approve this application. Thank you. Without condition. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Second. Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Okay, uh, your application is approved unanimously and there is no conditions, okay? Great, thank you very much. Okay. Number eight, which is 291 Sheldrake Boulevard, Application number eight. So we have here a number of residents and we have the agent, Marin Zabzuni, are you there? Mr. Chair and members, um, Marin hasn't registered uh, on the call on either the phone number provided by them or um, under their name via WebEx. Maybe we'll sit this one down for a moment and- um, There's the agent, huh? yeah. The agent is not present, right? This exact second, no. Okay. All right. So, could you please remind us that thing? I will. All right. So, we're going to stand down this uh, this application. The agent hasn't shown up yet. So, we'll go to number nine, which is two Canfield Place, application number nine, and here we have Neil John Strawbridge. Are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Okay. Can you please state your name and record just for the records here? Your name Certainly. My name is Neil. Uh, my name is Neil Strobridge and I'm the homeowner at two Canfield place in North York. Okay. And, um, and we have here a, um, 
uh, just one variance for for the pool in the front and see that's correct yes yeah the members do we need a presentation here okay uh, maybe just briefly tell us what uh, why the pool is in the front uh, in general sure. generally is in the back why is it in the front yeah we we are situated on a corner lot so our configuration of our lot uh, the backyard that this host has always occupied as the backyard is technically considered as the front yard. So that's why we required a minor variance. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, the staff didn't make any uh, any any concern. I mean, there are no questions. They didn't make any report. So so let's see uh, the members. Do you have any question for this gentleman or we move to move a motion? If there is no question, can I have a motion, please? Mr. Klassen? Yes, uh, Mr. Schiff, thank you. This is minor and there's the obvious explanation for the variance. I'd like to move to approve the application. Thank you. Second? Mr. Bartolo, all in favor? Okay, your application is approved. Great, thank you very much. Okay. So we'll go to number 10, and please don't forget to remind me. Huh? Number 10, application number 10, which is 124 Calvicton Drive. And we have here Andre Grisolia. Are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning. Good morning. You're the only one here. Could you please give us your name and address for the records here? Yeah, my name is Andre Grisolia, uh, 8 Free Met Crescent in Toronto. And I'm the uh, authorized agent for 124 Calvinson Drive. Okay. okay. Now we uh, we have here a, a, a report from transportation. They're asking to refuse the driveway with. Could you please mm -hmm. give us a short uh, discussion? What's going on here? Uh, the owners. I was going to revise it. I wanted to keep it. If I don't get it, then I'll revise it to the uh, to the uh, to the four meters. Well, we say well, if if we do, we don't negotiate here, tell us what you want to do, and we'll make I, a decision. Well, I'd like to comply, if 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 it's not granted by the committee. So, I still want to keep it there. If if it's refused, then I'll then I guess I'll have to adjust it to comply. Well, okay. No, my question well, to you: Are you do you want to go ahead with the driveway, and we make a decision, or you remove it? Because we cannot say if we don't. We will. Okay. Yes, I want to go ahead with the with the. Very with good. The so you're asking for the driveway Sorry. and transportation us into refuse. Okay. Any other any other explanation you want to make? On no. The, on I'm the application, yeah. nothing. Okay. All right. So uh, members, any uh, questions or uh, or motion? Um, the uh, transportation asking for the refusal of the uh, variance. For the width, and you heard the applicant was 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 saying. Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. I I I'm ready to make a motion on this um, application. And looking at it, I I do believe that um, it is minor transportation. I is our expertise, and seeing that um, that. Um, the applicant is willing to adhere to transport conditions. I will um, make a motion to approve this application and I will um, adhere to the transportation re uh, request that uh, variance number four be refused. And that would be the only condition I would put on this application. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Second, Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Okay, so the application is approved. Based on that just condition, that the uh, driveway uh, variance will be removed. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Chair, members, um, Marin is now present on the call. Okay, good. Okay, so we go back to item number eight. Uh, Two ninety one Sheldrake Boulevard, and we have here. Uh, Mr. Mason Zabzuni, are you there? Hi, my name is Marin Zabzuni. Yes, I am here. Uh, oh. Registered for 291 Shell Drake. Okay. Can you please um, 
give us here a, we have to, a number of residents here uh, to speak and could you give us please yes. a, a presentation and uh, if you can cover the uh, the councillor's recommendation to refuse the application could you please address that one as well Yes, certainly. Um, I will make a presentation. We submitted supporting material. I'm not sure if it got uploaded. And we did submit uh, support letters as well. Uh, just give me one moment, please. Um, here it is. Okay, so. Okay, so we. The subject site is located south of Blythewood in between Mount Pleasant Road and Bayview Avenue. We're proposing to build this home for the growing family, Glenn's family. It's a two-story detached dwelling. So there are variances requested uh, below. I'll start with building height, items number one and eight. The proposed building height is 9.33 meters, whereas the maximum is nine meters. So the 0 0.33 meter additional height is used in the design of the roof to keep the roof line proportion with the exterior massing. It's a very minor height uh, variance. We designed the house to ensure that the ground floor was as close to the grade as possible to reduce massing and building height. We feel this variance is minor in nature and in keeping with similar approvals in the neighborhood and surrounding build form. Uh, item number two, main wall height. The proposed main wall height is 7.87 meters where the maximum is seven meters. The main wall height dimensions proposed is taken from established grade to the top of the parapet trim. So the height of the second floor ceiling from established grade is 7.25 meters. We feel this variance is minor in nature and in keeping with similar approvals in the neighborhood and surrounding build form. And then we go to item number three for building length. So the building length is 18.97 meters where the maximum is 17 meters. The front elevation has a step back to the limit to limit the length to 17.2 meters in this location. So the building length dimension is taken from the front bay window, which protrudes out to the rear one story breakfast nook, which also protrudes out, causing this variance. But the majority of the house is a lot less at around 17.2 meters um, from we feel this variance is minor and uh, based on its merits it's it's a lot less than than the actual uh, length variance for the majority of the house so it's just a one story projection at both front and rear portions and uh, the lot is pretty deep as well and that's why this number seems a, a bit higher than um, it actually is for the majority of the home Item number four, floor space index. So the proposed floor space index is 0 0.59, where the maximum is 0 0.45. This is quite a common request in this area. And uh, the proposed design is within the average range of approvals in the neighborhood, as well as Sheldrake Boulevard. We feel this variance is minor in nature and in keeping with similar approvals in the neighborhood and surrounding build form. Uh, item number five speaks to the side yard setback. The proposed dwelling proposes an east side yard setback of 0 0.9 meters, where the minimum required setback is, is 0 0.9. Um, one moment. So it's a common request for this neighborhood. Um, we, have, we have a right of way on one side, so we only request a variance on uh, on this side uh, here. So it's it's quite common. Uh, we, ha we sent in a... Um, Comparable chart having all the variances from uh, the whole neighborhood and to show the, the evidence of this variance being uh, predominant in the area and in the street. Item six and seven front landscaping design. So this is for the proposed front soft landscaping area and driveway dimensions. The driveway is designed to taper as it approaches uh, the wall. The driveway is, is proposed wider than maximum to provide the necessary movement for vehicle access to the integral garage. As a result, the soft landscaping area is deficient and we also feel this variance is minor in nature. So based on the information outlined above, we are of the opinion that the variances addressed in this letter meet the four tests and the resulting dwelling is consistent and compatible with the existing neighborhood. 
our client and his seven month pregnant wife are expecting their first child and have immersed themselves with other young families on the street and the surrounding neighborhoods. They value and respect the history of the street and the area. Our requested variances fall in line with many single family homes in the area as evident in our supporting material and comparables chart. And I believe um, planning is also in the same opinion of uh, this application. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, We'll have, uh, who's here, uh, do, you, do you know? Uh, Mr. Chair and members, everyone that, ha all the re local residents are, are, are on the call today. They're all today. present, yeah? Correct. Okay. All right, so the first one is Claudette Wingel. Are you here? Yes, I am. Okay, can you please- I'm here. Okay, thank you. Could you please state your name and address for the records here by voice, and then tell us what's your concern about this application? Generally, we give five minutes and hope you'll finish within it or, or before. Yes, I will. Uh, my name is Claudette Widgell, and I live at 252 Sheldrake Boulevard. But Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my husband and I have lived in the neighborhood of Stibbert, Sheldrake, and Sherwood, linked by Dalewood, for the past 57 years. We first moved to 177 Stibbard and then to a larger house at 252 Sheldrake to accommodate a growing family. There were many moves of that nature in our day, moves from one street to the other or down the street or across the street because the character of this neighborhood is so attractive that residents were reluctant to leave. Also at the time, the city bylaws were limiting and strictly enforced, renovate, making renovating in the way of additions impossible. How can I describe this neighborhood? The lot sizes vary, the house sizes vary, there's a mixture of detached and semi-detached, there's a certain whimsical feeling about it as if it had been haphazardly developed. It has a feeling of space, airiness and light. It still has a significant number of mature trees in front yards and backyards. It has an abundance of shrubbery and plants. A great attraction is the park at the eastern end of those streets and the excellent schools that service the area. These are some of the factors that give this neighborhood its character. For quite a period of time, there were no homes for sale in the neighborhood. There was not sufficient departures to provide any availability. Owners that started enlarging their present homes to meet their level of comfort and needs rather than move away from the neighborhood. They devised bump outs, front and back, extensions into backyards and driveways, and dormers to open the attics. Some new owners took the option of gutting and reconfiguring the interior of their homes without interfering whatsoever with the exterior. Most renovating owners were mindful of their adjacent neighbors' privacy and space. This was all well and good. However, over the past eight to 10 years, a new trend has started that is very concerning to many residents and is having a negative impact on the character of the neighborhood. The trend is houses are bought, raised to the ground, and a new structure is erected that far exceeds the size of the original house and sells for more than twice the price. That trend is escalating and shows absolutely no sign of abating. These oversized structures seriously impact the adjacent properties in a negative way. I wish to repeat our personal experience Two of these structures were built on two properties adjacent to the back of our property. As a consequence, we lost all the privacy at the back of our house from the fall to the summer due to the cutting of six mature trees, due to the height of these houses making their first floor windows a much higher level than ours and above any possible man-made screen they could erect. Whenever we are in that section of the house, we feel violated in our own home and unable to enjoy it as we did in the past. Is it, most, it is most upsetting. In conclusion, my husband and I wish to state, granting these variances would encourage further disregard for the existing city bylaws and create very undesirable precedents. 
Therefore, we strongly urge this committee to deny the variances to the existing city bylaws requested in this application. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you. Uh, stay right there, the members may have some question. Um, I didn't want to interrupt you. The majority of the thing you said, unfortunately, we don't deal with it here. Whether the people want to build and sell the house and there is a there is trees there, the trees, we don't deal with them here. We deal with the variances. Is there any particular variance that you that bothers you that you think we should consider? They have eight variances here. So any particular one or you dispute all of them? Uh, I dispute the one in particular about the floor. Um, I wrote that in my letter of objection. Um, it's variance, uh, the one about the floor space. Floor space. Okay. Okay. So we'll. Uh, we'll uh, okay. Floor space, uh, the uh, number four. Okay. The floor space index. Thank that you. That is not minor. That is 69% beyond. Thank you. That's very, very. That's a major yeah. variant. Perfect. Thank you. So stay there. We'll see. Any other question for the speaker uh, members? So okay, we'll have we'll have the agent come back and respond to all the concerns. Okay, thank you. So the next one is Linda Gouch. Can you please uh, state your name if you're there? Oh hi, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. My name is uh, Linda Gouch. Yeah. I'm at two seventy six Sheldrake Boulevard. I'm here mostly to support the neighborhood. I'm I'm not happy with the amount of green space that's going to be taken away by this development. Um, I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared to speak right away because mostly I was going to listen to the other people and see if they were missing anything. Um, but I'm, I'm just concerned about losing more green space, uh, having something higher. Um, and it just really changes how the neighborhood is. What Clebet said, I, I, I agree. The, the sizes and all these variances that they're wanting, I think are wrong. Uh, I've lived in the neighborhood a long time as well, and I see people coming and they set a new precedent and then the next thing they want a little more and a little more and it just gets out of control, which I think it has. But that's really, I, I'm, I'm opposed to all of them because I just think it's wrong uh, to, to keep increasing these things and affecting the neighborhood that's supposed to keep its charm and its, its community. So anyway, thank you very much okay, for, well, for asking stay, me to okay, speak. Okay, stay, stay right there, please. So you're concerned about the, uh, the whole thing in general that you don't want any development of this kind with eight variances, they should they should follow the bylaw. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. So, any questions for the speaker? Next, we have. Thank you very much. The next one we have Susan Johnson. Susan Johnson, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Please tell us Can your you name me? and your address, and tell us if you have something different. From the two before, because we, uh, you know, we heard, we heard all the objections, and let's hear yours. Okay, so my name is Susan Johnson, and I live at 299 Shell Drake Boulevard. So I'm the applicant adjoining neighbor to the east. I've lived on this street for 30 years, and I'm concerned about variance number five. Bylaw states that minimum yard setbacks be no less than 0 0.9 meters. And the proposed setback for 291 Shell Drake is 0.67 meters. We live in a house that is over 110 years old, and we have an in ground cement pool in the backyard. So we have been advised by both a builder and our pool company who installed the pool that the demolition is so close to our house foundation and pool structure, which sits on a sand base, could cause serious damage, cracking to the pool, and flooding in our basement. For these reasons, I'm asking that bylaw 569-2013 be enforced. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's uh, clear. You're uh, you're disputing the number uh, instead of 0.9. They're 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 wanted to put 0.67. So that's what that's what you're yeah. asking. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any any question for the speaker? Okay. Next is. Uh, Robert DeVitt, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. I'm uh, Robert DeVitt. I live at 287 Sheldrake Boulevard. Thank you. Any Anything different would you like to say? Uh, yes. 
Yes, so so uh, I, I uh, would reinforce what you've heard, but I have a slightly different lens on it. My wife and I are 17 year residents of Sheldrake and we're the immediate west neighbor uh, of the applicant's home. Um, I'm going to focus on process massing height and side windows. As you saw from my written submission, this has been a very unusual process in the last two weeks. Um, I'm not going to dwell on that unusual start where we had confusion generated amongst the neighbors as a result of being hand delivered drawing packages that in fact didn't reflect the full variances. Um, I, uh, and in fact, we're different from home to home. The ones that were given to the people at 299 showed different side elevations on our side of the house to the ones we got. Um, that said, I'll also say I was saddened to see in the materials posted on the city website that one of the form type letters of support from a neighbor was actually dated May 20th, uh, almost a full week before the immediate neighbors were provided anything um, by, uh, by the owner at 291. And it's regrettable that the adjoining homeowners haven't been offered the time uh, to reflect and have dialogue on the plans. I'm very concerned about massing. As you know, the, the combination of height, length, and width has a huge potential impact on neighbors. Um, and the proposed uh, house exceeds the bylaws related to all three of those dimensions. And I think one has to look at it as a whole, as opposed to one variance at a time. This will affect our direct light, our privacy, and the utilization of our home. Uh, our property and that at 283 Sheldrake are unique on this street as we have a three story apartment building immediately behind us with very little setback. If this house is completed with the masses proposed, our backyard is going to feel particularly cramped and in fact have a sense of enclosure. The building mass, I think, will also disrupt the rhythm of our street streetscape. Uh, like much of Midtown, our streets uh, have houses spaced fairly close together, but we've been able through uh, various ideas of uh, and shapes through sloped roofs, punch outs, dormers, been able to, to maintain a, a, a lively light streetscape. In recent years, we've seen that eroded with uh, uh, the development of big rectangular spaces, and this will be just one more of that, disrupting the, the rhythm of the street. In terms of height specifically, I'm concerned that the proposed house will dwarf 287 Sheldrake and, uh, and create issues for us in terms of privacy, in terms of comfort and enjoyment of our home. My wife and I went out and actually measured our sidewall from uh, the driveway to the eaves, and it's only 5.18 meters. The bylaw is seven, which is is uh, perfectly allowed, and the proposal is for 7.87 meters. That's a significant difference. Um, and you know, in the case of uh, in healthcare, which is my background, we talk about how time is muscle when it comes to cardiology. I would argue in a case like this that height is light. The taller the building, the less light for the neighboring properties. There are simple planning solutions to, to reduce the sidewall as well as the other two variances related to height. I noticed the roof design uh, as one option. And I also noticed as I went through the drawings that uh, the proposal uh, is looking for uh, high floor to ceiling heights on the main level, 11 feet, nine feet elsewhere. We need to think of this in terms of necessity the, the owner's own application states, and I quote, the homeowners require more space to accommodate their needs. I'm not convinced that the height of the building actually addresses the stated need on the application form. Um, we are also concerned with side windows where uh, occupants of the house, if developed, can peer into our house. We would prefer if they use the uh, drawing that they shared with us by hand, which showed no windows uh, on our side, um, as opposed to the one they submitted to the city, which showed windows on our side. I believe this proposal does not meet the four tests that the committee uses to assess proposals, but I want to return to where I started the process. I believe that the unusual nature of this process, as I've described, the sharing of different uh, and inconsistent plans, the timing, I think this uh, is important for you to consider. I think there's an opportunity for the committee to send a very strong message about best practices and expected standards when it comes to open, timely, and effective communication with neighbors when variances are planned. And you can use your decision here today to make that statement. 
I would urge you to consider these comments I'll ask and you those to, of the I'll other residents. To, Thank I'll you. Ask you to summarize, please. You, you still have a few I, more seconds. Please summarize. Yep. I'm, and so those are my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any question for this gentleman? No. Uh, who's the next? Okay, Robert Breeze, are you there? I'm here. Okay, tell us your name and your address, please. Robert Breeze, uh, and I live at uh, 283 Sheldrake Boulevard. That's two doors west of the, uh, okay. the uh, of the property 291. Okay, could you tell us anything different from this, or you want to, um, or you agree with what he said before? I'm, I'm going. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 sh I'm going to shorten what I was going to speak to, but I am going to speak to height length, because I have personal experience with the development that happened to the uh, to the immediate west of us. Um, we've lived on the street for about thirty years. It, as uh, Claudette said earlier, there's there's an incredible neat uh, camaraderie within this neighborhood. People get on well. Part of the problem that we're faced with with these large uh, large houses going on to small lots is it's really dividing the neighborhood but let, let me speak to the actual impact that we have felt because of houses that were constructed at 281 sheldrake that's just over from us i attended a committee of uh this is not the picture has nothing to do with what i'm talking about uh, i'd like to speak to the impacts of tall and long buildings uh for, as i said earlier from personal experience when I attended the committee of, uh, of adjustment hearing in 2001, and then the OMB, we said that the house would diminish the enjoyment of our property, as well as set a precedent. And both concerns have proven to be valid. The houses to the east, that's 281, extends 6.4 meters beyond the found our foundation, and the sidewall is 7.5 meters high. What that means to us in reality, and it's not just numbers, what it means to us is we lose sun in our backyard at 3 p.m. We have a sunroom, it disappears at 3 p.m. We have a beautiful dining room that used to be sunny. There hasn't been sun in it in 15 years. It's somber and it's not pleasant. We have lost 30 degrees of sight line because of the house at 281 Sheldrake Boulevard. Our garden has had to be turned into a shade garden. Our rose bushes are gone because there's not enough sun and not enough air circulation. The house at 291, uh, Sheldrake, Sheldrake that's in front of us today, it's taller and it's longer. It's going to create more shadows. My wife who likes to sit and uh, have a coffee after breakfast because we're older, we're in our 70s, we're retirees, there's no more sunrise. So the sunset's gone, now the sunrise will be, will be gone as well and we'll lose another 10 degrees of, uh, of uh, sight lines. I want to speak as well about privacy. The buildings at 281 Sheldrake that were put in there at, uh, in 2001, they have push-outs, the same kind of push-outs that are being proposed for 291. Those push-outs have windows on the side. The push-out on the second floor, the push-out on the first floor, they look right down onto our dining patio. We, in the summer, we're always eating out on the patio. We've lost all of our privacy. We love the family that are there right now, but it's too much for the people to be staring down at us all of the time. Uh, 291, they're proposing the same thing, push outs, windows on the side, and depending on which document you look at, because as Rob Devitt has said, there's a number of drawings out there. We don't know which ones are the, are the true ones. It shows a balcony as well, a balcony that will look out over uh, our, our property. The next thing is we feel boxed in, as Rob Devitt has said, at the back, we have a three-story, 18-unit apartment put in the 1960s. It would never be approved. We're going to have two buildings on either side of us, 281 and 291, going back 20, 25 feet, 25, 30 feet in the air. We're going to, we're totally boxed in. There will be echoing, there will be uh, heat, there will be, makes our life a lot more difficult. My wife went out and took a neighborhood poll. We were hoping to get a resolution to this, and so it was a last minute poll, she, uh, June the 2nd and June the 3rd. She walked around to neighbors, and within those two or three hours, she got 12 signatures. We have another 10 that want to oppose this, but there wasn't time to be able to do it. What are our recommendations? I think that it should be rejected outright uh, because it doesn't uh, meet 
it, they haven't demonstrated the necessity of such a tall, long house. There's no necessity, as Rob Devitt has said, but at the very least, it should be deferred and discussions carried on with the neighbours. If you decide to uh, recommend the proceeding, we'd recommend you stick with the 2013 bylaw and remove all pushouts and side facing windows in those pushouts. They undermine privacy. We have direct experience. It's been happening to us for 15 years. And it will happen to us again if this gets constructed as proposed. And thank you very much. Thank you. Any question for? Hello. Sorry, you're echoing out. Uh, may I speak? Yes. Happy, uh, happy to respond. You're echoing out. I can't hear you well, but uh, happy to respond to the neighbors. I'll start with uh, 287 Sheldrake, the, the West neighbor. So. Uh, our the homeowner, our client, has provided this neighbor with a uh, walk around visits, and made several uh, made availability several times to adjacent neighbors to ensure any and all questions and concerns were heard. We removed the side door canopy at the request of this neighbor, as our client has made many efforts to come into an understanding with uh, all concerning neighbors. Height is virtually the same as the adjacent neighbor at 287 Sheldrake, the proposed height. Um, also, the neighbor seems to have a front yard parking pad that doesn't seem to meet landscaping requirements. I'm not sure why they're as concerned on our end. And one of the reasons we, we have this variance is because of the mutual driveway, which has more pavement area. Uh, both parties, our client and the neighbor at 287 Sheldrick, obtained counsel in hopes of amicably resolving some of the concerns presented by 287 Sheldrick. Unfortunately, councils uh, could not completely agree on full terms. Discussions are still in place to try and resolve this amicably by both parties. In regards to 299 Sheldrake, um, the kitchen nook, given the design elevation of the main floor is being reduced and lowered, this will not impact any privacy concerns for the neighbor. In addition, six to nine hedges will surround the backyard, ensuring additional privacy for both adjacent neighbors. Uh, again, this uh, our, our proposed design, we made sure that, you know, the there's only a few steps from grade to the front first floor and, and porch and deck area. So the house is sunken in to reduce impact as much as possible, whereas in the street, there are several elevated uh, homes, builds and approved existing structures that have the first floor on top of the garage with uh, a lot more elevated height. So we did not go with that uh, design concept. We tried to reduce massing considerably, and I believe we've been very successful in achieving that in terms of uh, the overall uh, length, width, and height of the proposed dwelling. So in regards to uh, 283 Sheldrake, the neighbor there, um, my client has made several efforts and attempts to discuss his plans and his immediate neighbors, but in, is in no way obligated to be a topic of neighborhood discussions and or consultations, particularly during these COVID times. There are over 50 homes in the street uh, east of Mount Pleasant, and to have my client collectively discuss his plans in the street is simply uh, not as realistic. So several attempts was, were made. Uh, the neighbors reserved the right to object, of course, but uh, to request and be entitled to specific design discussions or consultations at the expense and time of my client is not as realistic, um, excessive and costly in nature. So we defer to the committee to determine that the requested variances are minor in nature and in line with previously approved single family homes on the street and surrounding area. Uh, many of the homes on the street currently do not meet the minimum 75% soft landscaping and several homes in the area have converted their front yards into parking pads. Uh, to single out my client would be excessive in nature, but more importantly, um, a bit uh, hypocritical in nature to those who have objected and presently do not meet this requirement. Yeah. So we're not setting a precedence can here. You, we're, excuse me, can you please summarize if they have questions? Yes. Numbers, we come back to you. 
Okay. Yeah, so to summarize, um, our proposal, we were not setting any precedents. It's well within in line on many of the approved variants and building existing structures, um, sizes, and planning has no concern. We feel that if the committee reviews this based on the house's merit, the project, uh, where our, our variances are minor in nature and we strongly believe that we meet the four tests for this application. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Klassen? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a question of uh, uh, variance four. So that seems to be the one that 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 then that that triggers uh, a number of others. Uh, so you stated that what you're requesting is fairly common in that area. But are you able to provide us some uh, evidence uh, that 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 backs up? That, uh, that that conclusion? Yes, uh, we actually provided and we sent in supporting material with a chart of approved uh, variances and I do have it in front of me. Um, I don't know if it's up uploaded online, but we sent it a few days ago uh, with many comparable applications and variances that do show this um, FSI uh, that's been approved. And I can uh, name you some of the approvals here one moment. We're looking for the chart on our end. We'll have it up. Yeah. It's a supporting material, yes. So, if not, you can tell us the numbers of the uh, houses that had the same thing or more than you. Okay, I'm just pulling it up. One moment. Yeah, note for um, the chair and committee members, the item was submitted after the deadline. Okay. Um, so we have to go digging uh, on our end a little bit more than normal uh, to get the, the item, but we'll have it up in a moment. Okay. So FSI, I can tell you, um, 333 Sheldrick Boulevard was approved at 0 0.57, uh, 30 St. Uh, Hilda's Avenue, 0.59, uh, 18 Alderbury Gardens, 0.59, 55 uh, Stibber Avenue, 0.60, 139 Sheldrake Boulevard was approved at 0 0.61, uh, 70 Sheldrake Boulevard was approved at 0 0.63, uh, Saint, 26 St. Hilda's Avenue at 0 0.64, 305 Sheldrake Boulevard at 0 0.65, 50 Sheldrake Boulevard at 0 0.65, um, 171 Stibbert Avenue at 0 0.67, 9 Blythewood Crescent at 0 0.68. So uh, I can go on, but there's there's quite a few uh, approvals that are within this uh, FSI. Thank you. Areas. Yeah. Okay. That's. Uh, uh, are you okay, Mr. Klassen, with those uh, figures? Okay. Any other question? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, if not, I'll, I'll need a motion, please. Ms. Sankar. Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair. You know, having listened uh, very carefully to what the applicant has said, as well as um, the debutants, which I know their concerns are, uh, from their perspective, extremely important and very real to them. Um, I have to look at this application in terms of uh, the merits of the four tests. And um, upon looking at that and reviewing and the evidence that were pro was provided by the applicant, I do believe that uh, this application does indeed meet the four tests and the character uh, of the neighborhood. And I accept the explanations and the evidence that uh, has been provided um, by the applicant here today with no objections from transportation and um, no real concerns from the staff, as well as a number of letters of support. I'll put forward a motion to approve this application. Um, There's no condition. Huh? No. No Thank con you. No condition, no? No condition, no. sir. Thank you. Second. Mr. Bartolo, second. All in favor? Opposed? Mr. Uh, Klassen is opposing. Okay, sir, your application is approved and there is no conditions. Do we have the number 11? Do we have the people there beside the agent? 
there is two area resolution. Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Chair, I wonder if we take uh, a little recess at this point. Thank you. Okay, we'll have a, we'll have a ten minute recess and we'll be right back. Oy. Thank you.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're resuming the session here, and we're in number 11, which is 41 Glenbray Avenue. We'll wait for the members to show up. Mr. Chair and members, uh, Glenn is present on the call. He is unmuted. Uh, so go ahead, Glenn. Hi, good morning. It's uh, Glenn Rubinoff, or should I say good afternoon? It's Glenn Rubinoff here. Sorry, I can't hear you. I'm not sure if I'm, uh, if that's yeah. can you please, can you please repeat your name and address, please? Yes, it's uh, Glenn Rubinoff, uh, Rubinoff Design Group. Mr. 18. Chair, members. Okay, we Glenn have uh, we have on one on we have one more speaker. So go ahead, here. Glenn. We, ha <laughs> we have one more speaker. I hear lots of noises here, Mr. Rubinoff. We hear lots of uh, noises there. Could you <laughs> My apologies. I I had the YouTube on at the same time, so I I, I turned it off. So. Okay, thank you. So we have one more speaker here. Therefore, we need you to make a small presentation, which is usual five minutes. So please go ahead. Sure. Uh, uh, good. Good afternoon. So this is an application for a new house uh, uh, on uh, 41 Glenbray. Um, we have uh, with we have uh, eight variances before you, and I could go through them with you. Uh, there is a staff report uh, from planning, uh, uh, basically with conditions of approval. Uh, in relation to the elevation drawing, and I'll, I'll explain what that's about. We also have transportation services has no objection to the driveway. So um, initially, I'll just start with variance number one is really in relation to the front porch. Uh, a setback variance of 0.6 where 0.9s are required, which is one foot variance, uh, and that's to the uh, north, and that's basically in line with the house. Variance number two is for building height which is 8.8 .8 meters or 8.5 is required, a uh, difference of about one foot. And I just wanna point out with that, that the actual uh, calculation of height is taken from the uh, property line at the setback, but on the neighbor's property. And where it's taken from, there's actually a, a differential of about four inches, uh, where the height, where it's taken from is actually four inches below where we calculate, uh, you know, from where our actual grade is. So our actual differential is about eight inches, not 12, but it's just something I wanted to point out to you. Uh, variance number three is related to the wall height, the side exterior wall height, and that's in relation to the uh, city planning staff report. The reason they've asked for it to be tied to the side elevations is because the actual eaves around the house is uh, in compliance. There are two dormers that project above, and that is why there's a variance to the top of the dormers. 
So the actual, um, just to be clear that the wall is not at 7.96, it's just to accommodate for that um, as per city plan staff um, uh, conditions. Variance number four is related to the building length. Building length of 17.53, where 17 meters is permitted, a difference of one, uh, one foot nine inches. And if you look at the actual, um, well, we, we can go back to it in a minute. Um, variance number five is related to the side yard setback, the north side yard setback, which is uh, 0.61 instead of 0.9. Uh, variance number six uh, is a density of 60.7%. Or 0 0.0607, where 0.45 is permitted. Um, and um, uh, variance number seven is in, in relation to the width of the driveway, which includes the right of way and its calculation. So even though the width says 5.10, that's including it without the right of way, which has to be maintained because it's accessed for both properties. The actual width is only 3.59 wide. And the final is the old bylaw calculation of. of uh, of wall height, which uh, which is taken from also from the from the grade the average grade across the front. So if I could just ask you to pull up the um, uh, the, uh, the the area map that I that I uploaded to the uh, to the committee, uh, it kind of goes through some of the the variances and also some explanation. The um, variance the side yard setback variance to the north. Uh, if you look on the map where that little green spot there, I don't know if they can zoom in at all. The homes to the north are all, that's their backyards. So right now the requirement is three foot side yard. Uh, we have on the, uh, you know, so we're in, in terms of distance, three feet versus two feet versus those houses. As you can imagine, it's a difference of, you know, if it's 40 feet, maybe 41 feet, it's not gonna be right next to anyone's home on that side. The other side of the home, uh, is uh, is five feet because the right of way is a is a particularly large right of way, uh, and I should mention that the bylaw is three feet. So we are pushed over because of the right of way, which has impacted our ability to, which requires us effectively to work through a plan um, to do it uh, to move a little bit closer on the north side. Um, the side elevation we we talked about. Um, I, I I really just feel like. These decisions that you see here, the density, there's several of them that, that fall within the, uh, uh, you know, we're at 60%. There's several that are much, quite a bit over that. There's 64% across the road at uh, 39. Uh, there's several on uh, on the adjacent streets. So I feel like we're not pushing any real limits here. It just happens to be that, um, uh, you know, that, that there's, I understand this. Okay, Mr. Rovinov, can you please summarize? You have five minutes and you will, we'll get you back after we hear the speakers. Yeah, just, just simply that the variances is eight variances, but they are minor and they, they have minimal impact to the adjacent uh, neighbors. And as, as I think it's, it's consistent with redevelopment in the area. Thank you. Thank you. We have here a speaker, uh, Philip Lou, are you there? Philip Liu? I am. Okay, can you please state your name and address and tell us what's your concern you. after you heard the the, uh, the, the, the agent? Thank you, my name, uh, my name is Philip Louis, L-U-I. Uh, I'm the owner of 159 Glenvale Boulevard, uh, which is immediately north um, of the uh, building um, that, uh, of interest. Um, I do have several concerns. Um, I think the first one I wanna raise is the uh, first of all it's the the tactics that uh, the owners have used to try to pressure neighboring uh, owners to sign a letter of support um there were there weren't really any opportunities to speak uh, other than uh, you know uh, we were uh, pressure to uh, provide our name uh, and a signature and so i think can I you please committee, can, you, uh, can you please tell us what you're concerned about the variances those things we cannot deal with them here well, I think it's important in that um, the other support of uh, the letter of support that you see in the application, I think you need to, uh, the committee should uh, take that into consideration of the pressuring tactic. The variance that I, uh, that are particularly concerned to me is the proposed north side uh, yard setback. Um, it is being reduced uh, to 0.61 meters. Um, I, I do believe uh, by moving the uh, building closer to, uh, to the uh, north um, lots, 
Um, they are uh, getting it, make, uh, moving it closer. I think it's important to highlight that uh, these lots have shallower lots compared to other properties in the neighborhood. So while there may be variances acceptable in other neighborhoods or in other streets in the neighborhood, um, I think this is uh, an exception and that uh, we need to, you know, the uh, acceptance of the variance uh, in other places may not be, or should not be applied to uh, this particular lot. Um, the other thing is uh, when it is closer, I am concerned about uh, the potential hazard that this could cause. Um, in the drawing, you will see that there is a basement uh, a window uh, that's accessed on the north side. So if uh, the, the uh, building is moved closer to the property line, uh, it does narrow the access to it. And so I am concerned about uh, hazard, uh, particularly for fire or if a firefighter needs to access that window, uh, that may be, uh, it may be a problem. The second uh, variance that I'm concerned about, it's <clears throat> related to the uh, side exterior wall um, increase to 7.9 meters, which is nearly above uh, a meter above what is permitted. Um, because the building is closer to our, to the Northern uh, neighbors, um, and by also having it uh, higher, um, there is a direct impact um, and I've submitted uh, pictures of what um, uh, this could impact uh, in terms of the, the lights, uh, shadowing, uh, enjoyment of the yard, et cetera. Um, and so I am concerned how high uh, the side wall will be and also how close the building will be uh, to, the, uh, to the northern neighbors. Okay, that's it. Okay, so you're concerned about uh, variance number three regarding the uh, exterior main wall and number five regarding the yard setback, okay? Yeah. Are you still there? Mr. Lu, are you still there? I am still here and uh, those are the variances I'm concerned of. Thank you. Let's see the members, are any question for the speaker? No? Okay, Mr. Robinov, could you come back and uh, and uh, address those concerns and see if the members sure. have any questions? Sure. So, um, as I mentioned, the the homes on uh, on uh, Glenvale um, are are perpendicular to this house, so the rear yards are at least forty feet away, if not that. So, I don't know how a variance of one foot would have much impact on them in terms of you know, sunlight or anything of that nature. Um, what I would like to ask if you could show on the screen is the side elevation, the north side side elevation, so it could be clear what, what's going on here. The only side that has a, uh, a variance is really the south side, because the north side is just the eaves run at uh, in, in compliance. The, the committee asked that, uh, uh, that the wall Height, so let's go to the next, the north side yard setback, just to give you an idea there. So you see the eaves, that all, those comply. There's really nothing projecting. On the south side, if you look at the south side elevation, uh, there's two, um, those two dormers there. Those are what the projections are for. So it's really, uh, this house complies effectively uh, with the uh, wall height uh, bylaw. It's really just the projections for those, for those uh, dormers. Um, so, I mean, those, you know, those concerns expressed feel like they're really, they, they're minimal impact, if any, uh, to the uh, adjacent neighbors. And, um, and, and there are, there are precedents, you know, in the, in the neighborhood for side yard setbacks. But in our particular case, if we didn't have a right of way, three feet and three feet would mean we would have a 24 foot wide house. Um, because we would be able to comply with both of them. We wouldn't be here, but we are, we are bound by the fact that there's a five foot right away on one side. And in order to just make the plan work, we've asked for a one foot variance. So I feel it's minor considering the proximity of the neighbors to to those uh, to that setback. And uh, that's all I want to say. Thank you. I'll see if the members have any question. Members, any questions to this uh, agent? No, if there is no questions. Can I have a motion, please? Mr. Chair, yes. Mr. Chair, is there another speaker or is that all the speakers for this one? No, item? that's it. That's it. Philip Louis. Okay, one. thank the you. Only one. The other one is not is nothing. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks for reminding us. Go ahead. Any speak any question? Mr. Bartolo. No questions, Mr. Chair. Just a motion if we're ready. Yeah, no. 
if there's any uh, motion then. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, in, in listening to the uh, applicants arguments, I, I tend to agree with them. The uh, issue of the uh, elevation with the increased height, it's in keeping with the comments from the staff report with the two small projections for the dormers. And I think it's uh, consistent with the pattern of redevelopment and I don't see uh, any issues with uh, allowing the about uh, one foot um, <clears throat> north uh, yard setback due to the uh, uh, five foot easement they have on the other side. So uh, with those uh, comments in mind, I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application uh, subject to the one condition that the uh, exterior main wall height be developed substantially in accordance with the north and south side elevation drawings attached to this report. Thank you. Second. Mr. Klassen, second. All in favor? Okay. Your application is approved unanimously based on that condition of the uh, staff for the uh, elevation uh, developer north okay. of the elevation drawing. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 12, which is 585 Merton Street. And then we have just the, just the agent and owner. Uh, Afshin Abdekar. Yes. Abdekar, could you please state your name and address? Yes, my name is Afshin Abdekar, TDMTN Associates. Thank address you. is 42 Industry Street. Thank you. Now we have uh, with you registered also Stuart Clinton. Who wants to speak, you or him? I will be speaking. You'll be speaking. Okay. So just give me to give me a minute. Staff, we have. I mean, sure. members, we have here. This here to for a deck. We have four variances and three support. Three letters of support. Do we need the presentation? No. Okay. We don't need the presentation. And uh, could you tell us, Mr. Ertebagar, do, do, uh, do you want to add something? We will go ahead. The members do not need a presentation. No, uh, I think uh, everything self is explanatory. Thank you. Okay. Can I have a motion then, please? Or if you have any, any question? If there is no question, Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, I'll motion to approve this application given the uh, support level letters involved, as well as um, what I believe seems to be uh, um, an application that meets the four tests. Um, so motion to approve this application and uh, without condition. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Second. Mr. Bartolo, only favor. Okay, your application is approved unanimously, okay? Thank you very much. Thanks. Item number 13, which is 47 Rayburn Avenue, application number 13. We have here only one, just the agent. Uh, Ken Tai, are you there? Yes, uh, Mr. Okay. Chair and committee, I'm here. Uh, just uh, just repeat your name, please, and address for us, for the record. Yeah, my name is Ken. Yeah, sorry. My name is Ken Tai. Address is 12 Rosemount Avenue, Markham. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, just a second. We have here. Um, did you read the report, the staff report with the condition? Yes, I do. Okay, so. Uh, members, we have here uh, three variances and uh, forestry condition and the uh, staff report with the condition that he's aware of. Do you want a presentation? No? Okay. So, sir, we don't need the presentation. The members do not need the presentation. Do you want to add something or we just move ahead for the decision? Um, yeah, I want to clarify uh, something about the my applications. Please go. Originally is... We yeah, originally we are asking three revians, uh, and um, we actually resubmit the uh, the the applications, uh, the drawings in May 27 before the uh, staff report. We actually uh, withdrawing the uh, item number two. Um, in that case, uh, we are no longer asking for the rear uh, platform. 
Um, and in that same time, uh, because we're dropping uh, the number item number two, um, then item number one, we are originally asking 38.7% and actually right now is asking 34.66%, which is um, aligned with the staff report. I just wanted to point out this um, to revise. It's in the record, but uh, I think it's too late to circulate it, so I need to ask uh, in front of the committee. Thank you. Okay, uh, you give me two seconds. Are you uh, are you changing anything here? Yeah, we uh, make the uh, second floor platform smaller. So instead of um, we have uh, eight uh, over eight point three two meter square rear platform, we drop to three point nine eight uh, meter square. So that's why we can withdraw the second uh, item. Um, Okay. And also reduce the first item. So yeah. with withdrawing the second item, huh? Okay. Correct. Okay. Any uh, any questions? Um, Mr. Chair, did he say something else about item number one? I I did you? Yes. He removed number two, but item number one you said reduced, reduced to, to. Yeah. From yeah. From 38.7 reduced to 34.66%. Um, in the report, is recommend 35%. So we're actually less than uh, the staff report. Thank you. Okay. Did you get that, uh, Ms. Sankar? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. I'm having trouble here getting this. Uh, keeps cutting me off. Okay, are the, uh, any other question? Can I have a motion then? So could you please, in your motion, repeat which one is removed and the one which changed to 38.66, if you want to make a, a motion, please. Mr. Bartolo? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will put forward uh, a motion to approve this application subject to the following revisions. Uh, variance number one be reduced to 34.66%. Variance number two be eliminated. Uh, variance number three is approved. Uh, subject to the uh, three conditions in the urban forestry memo and that the uh, plan be developed substantially in accordance with the updated uh, plan submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Second, Ms. Sankar, all in favor? Okay. Okay, sir, your, your application is approved based on those changes and conditions, okay? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Committee. Number 13, okay. Item number 14, which is 10 Alverston Drive, application number 14. And there we have just the agent, Paolo Rivetta. Are you there? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Could you please state your name and address for the record? Yes, my name is Paolo Pivetta of Global Architect, 6 Leswin Road, Toronto. Thank you. We have just you here. Um, there we have the, uh, since the uh, transportation, did you read the transportation report? It said to defer the application. And, yes, and we the have read the report. Okay, so could you please make us, give us a five, Minutes presentation, tell us what you want to do about this uh, application here. Sure, not a problem. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, at this time, we are respectfully requesting a deferral of the application as we are in agreement with the recommendation made by Transportation Services to prepare a parking utilization survey and address transportation's comments. Uh, we forwarded this request on June 8th, but it appears not to have made it on the deferral list um, to be heard at the beginning of this hearing. A deferral will allow our client the time to prepare and submit the documentation that transportation has requested. Our wish is that the committee agrees with this request for a deferral. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yeah, I think I saw your letter. You asked for the specific dates, July 8th or something, but we we can't decide here for the staff what time they're going to bring it. So 
if we if the if the members decide to defer it you will have to check with the uh, staff when is it when it's coming okay so that's that's I, fine thank you uh, can i have a, a question or motion to defer mr bartolo uh, yes mr chair through you uh, i will put forward a, a motion to defer this application to allow the applicant time to uh uh, coordinate with transportation planning and prepare the reports, uh, and I'll make that uh, sign you Sign you Thank you. Second, Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Okay. Okay, sir, your application is deferred, sign die as you requested. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item number 15, which is 24, Dip Glade Crescent, application number 15. And here we have, we have just the agent here. Albert Yerushalmi. Hello, can Hi. you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Could you please uh, state your name? Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Can you see me? Yeah, my name is Albert Yerushalmi from Eden Engineering, uh, 34 Pheasant Valley Court, Markham. Thank you. And I'm represented to the owner. Thank you. Uh, let me see here. We have a staff report with the, uh, just a condition. And uh, four variances with one letter of objection, but I have nobody here. Uh, members, do we, uh, do we need the presentation? If not, can I have questions or motion for this one? Mr. Klassen? Yes, uh, if you're ready for uh, a motion, then I can proceed. I will move to approve this application subject to addition of the staff report that that at the side exterior main wall that at the height be developed substantially in accordance with the east uh, and west side elevations drawings of the uh, 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 of the June second staff report. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly what it said. And uh, can I have a second, please? Ms. Sankar, second. All in favor? Okay. Sir, your application is unanimously approved. You made a good presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, item number 16, which is uh, 170 Rainy Avenue, application number 16. And here we have, um, is, is the area resident online? Uh, Mr. Chair, yes, the area resident that's wishing to speak on this item is present on the call. Okay. Uh, Kem or Kem uh, Erdemir, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. You're the, it said you're the co-owner. Are you going to present your, uh, we have one more speaker here, therefore we need you to make a presentation, please. Sure. Uh, would you like me to start? I'm sorry. Can I start? Yeah, go ahead. Can I start? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, thanks. So this is an application to um, uh, convert a bungalow house to make an addition to the backyard and also increase to the two floor, uh, two floor, two story house. This um, house is uh, going to be a modern house, like modern styles so of flat roof. So if you look at the variances request that the site uh, side setbacks are the existing um, already existing side walls and it's uh, very similar to the neighborhood uh, in, in terms of um, the, the coverage and the, the sorry in terms of the building height because it's a flat roof uh, house uh, the limit is much lower than a regular roof house so um, that's the reason that we are not actually meeting. If we were to build a, you know, a, a regular roof instead of flat roof, we would be allowed up, uh, up to 10 meters. 
but we are doing a flat roof, so um, that's why we are not really meeting the building color, uh, building height. Um, and uh, for the coverage and the length, uh, as the Committee of Adjustment um, approved previously, um, there are quite a few uh, examples. It really is, uh, uh, it blends in with the existing um, neighborhood. So in our opinion, it's uh, minor in nature. That's it. And if there are any specific questions, I can Yeah, answer. well, we'll come back to you after we hear the other uh, uh, speaker. We have here uh, uh, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah and Mina Manukian. Are you there? Members in committee, uh, Mina was on the call a moment ago, but has seemed to have uh, has seemed to have left the call. She left the call, eh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so do you want you want to try again because we uh, is there any uh, maybe tell hello Mina Mina Saro Mina are you there Saro and Mina Manukian yeah Mr Chair members like I said the the uh, Saro and Mina were on the call but have since have since disappeared off the call. Yeah, he made the presentation already. I guess we should move on. Eh? So there's nothing to try. They're not there. Okay, thank you. All right, members, they, that's all there is. The speaker here, do you have any question for the speaker? Is the, uh, the other resident is not showing up. Okay, so any question or motion maybe? Can I have a motion then? Mr. Bartolo? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in evaluating this application, I think it's uh, fairly straightforward. The uh, owner is maintaining existing condition in some cases, and uh, I believe it meets the four test and it is relatively minor in nature all around. I will put forward a motion to approve this application. Thank you. Second, Ms. Sankar, all in favor? Okay. Unanimously approved your application, and there is no conditions. Thank you very much. Item number 17, which is 510 St. Clements Avenue. Item number 17. And here we have one more resident. One uh, more resident. Mr. Adro Laszlo, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. Can you please state your name and address for the records here? Sure. I'm Drew Laszlo, agent for the owner. Address is 3317 Young Street. Thank you. Uh, we have a goddess. What's her? Is he online? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. The area resident that wants to participate is on the call. Okay. Mr. Garis, what's her? Are you there? Oh, Mr. Chair, um, do you want to have uh, Mr. Lazo do a presentation first? Uh, yeah, I just want to see if he's there. Oh, he's present on the call. He's present, yeah? yeah? Okay, because if he's not there, we can ask the... Okay. Okay, Mr. Lazlo, the, uh, the area resident is here. So therefore, we need you to make a, a small presentation before we hear them, okay? Sure, thank you. Um, just to start off, there is a staff report and it. Uh, I work closely with staff to reduce variance number two, that's the overall height variance, to reduce it to 9.15 meters. And I would also like to add uh, that I'll be eliminating variance number one altogether. Okay, number one, yeah. Okay, right. so just uh, a brief. Yeah, there is number I'm two. Sorry, just say. There is number two from 9.59 to 9.14. That was the staff recommendation, but you're adding now. Correct. But you're adding there is number one, you want to remove it as well. Correct. Thank you, please go ahead. Um, I just so you know, I think maybe I'll just focus on variance number two first. Uh, okay. If staff could just put up the, the the one front elevation presentation material that I forwarded, it just kind of brings everything into perspective. There we go. So you just quickly, you can see the sort of as of right roof that would we be permitted to build, you know, and not require committee of adjustment. Um, you can see where we're being, our proposed roof, the highest horizontal line, 
the as of right roof is actually approximately slightly over six feet taller than the variance that's being sought today for a flat roof. So I just kind of wanted to show this to the committee members because it really kind of clarifies things. Uh, going okay, so number one has been uh, eliminated. All we're left with are two other variances. Number three has to do with the length of the dwelling. And we are, it, it's a four foot or a 1.22 meter length variance. In reality, the house itself is only 0.6 meters or two feet longer than what's permitted. We have a second story bay window that's cantilevered out at the back of the house that accounts for an additional 0.6 meters. And as far as variance number four is concerned, we are just asking for a slight amount of gross floor area, which tends to be normal for this uh, for this area. Thank you. Okay, uh, so we'll see. Uh, I hear the uh, the resident is here, and uh, their name is Gary Switzer. Yeah, uh, Mr. Gary Switzer, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, thank you. Can you please tell us what's your concern and state? Wonderful. My name is Yeah. My name is Gary Switzer. I live at 510 St. Clements, which is two doors away from the application. And I'm speaking on behalf of nine neighbors who had issues with the variances being requested. Those nine neighbors uh, consisted of every flanking neighbor around the property, two on to the west, two to the east and the ones on Briar Hill to the north and two on the other side of the street. We wrote a letter opposing the variances based on various official plan policies dealing with prevailing character of the neighborhood. Um, I'm very pleased to hear that the applicant has dropped variance number one. That was of major concern to the flanking neighbors, particularly at 508, the Charlotte family, and to 512, the Kraft family. Um, and we also understand, I think that the, um, the drawing that uh, Mr. Laszlo uh, uh, sent in showing the, the potential roof as of right was persuasive. And I think we're prepared to drop our objection to that variance. However, there's still one left that I would appreciate if the committee could refuse, which would be the length, variation, uh, the length variance, which is number three. Notwithstanding, as as Drew was saying, that it's only you know part of it is is the bay window. One has to realize that the height of that wall, even though it's lower than what could be built, is a 30 foot brick wall that is extending into half the backyard of the Charlotte family at number 508. If that variance could be refused and the length of the house could be reduced to the as of right, which is the 17 meters. I think that would be a, uh, go a big way uh, in terms of making the house more compatible uh, with the flanking neighbors. And uh, essentially, that's that's um, that's what we're um, that, that's it in terms of uh, what uh, what we would be looking for. And if uh, I, I, there hasn't been any direct conversations with the applicant, but if they could also look at if they're doing the as of right deck, which still is eight feet above grade, which means it's above the flanking fence with the Charlottes. If they could look at doing some sort of side fencing on that deck so there was no overlook condition into the Charlotte's backyard, I think that would also be greatly appreciated. Okay, that's it? That's it. Okay, just for the record here, you said your address is 510. St. Clement and the no, sorry, my address is five five oh six. Sorry. Oh yeah, because it said here or it said five. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's not very important, okay. just for the records here for the people to know. Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Any question for this uh, speaker? No? Okay. So we'll get back the agent to address those concerns. Mr. Laszlo, could you please come back and address the concern you just heard? Um yeah, so that just has to uh, has to do with the length. Again, it, it, as far as I see it, it's only two feet because the bay window again, the bay window was included in length. I'm not actually sure why. Uh, typically, it is a permitted projection. 
Uh, so it, that's why I keep kind of saying that that variance, as far as I'm concerned, is only two feet. We are in line with the house to the west, like our house is the same depth as theirs. So I, I truly believe that two feet is not going to have uh, very much or if any negative impact to any of the either of the adjacent houses. Okay, thank you. Thank that's you. it. Any questions for uh, Mr. Laszlo? Mr. Bartolo? Uh, yes, thank you. Can you just restate the amended height, please? Yes. Amended height is, and that's regarding variance number two, 9.15 meters. 9.15. Okay, thank you. That's in Thank you. Any other question? No. Can I have a motion, please? Mr. Klassen. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I move to approve this application. I think with the revisions that have been made, it is the uh, the requests uh, uh, are minor, so it is approved with variance one being eliminated, variance two changing to 9.15 meters, and also it'll be subject to urban uh, urban forestry. Thank you. Second? Mr. Bartolo, second, all in favor? Okay, uh, Mr. Bart Mr. Laszlo, your application is approved unanimously based on forestry and the two changes we just mentioned. Number two. Thank you very much. The height number two and removal of number one. Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, number 18, there's nobody there, huh? Uh, number 18, which is 18 Glen Curran Avenue, application number 18. We don't have the, uh, we don't have any other speaker, just the agent. And, uh, and uh, Mr. And Mr. Amir, could you please state your name and address? Yes, Mr. Chair, my name is uh, Nasser Amr. Um, I'm of RGI Architects here on behalf of the owner of 18 Glen Curve, and my address is 200 Cashing Woods Court in Markham, Thank Suite 3 of 314. Thank you. Just let me ask the members, we have just one variance, transportation, no objection, and two letters of support. Do we need the presentation? No? Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Amir, we don't need the presentation. Do you want to add something before we go to committee for decision? Um, no, Mr. Chair. I, I believe it's uh, self-explanatory in this case. Thank you. Okay. Question or motion? Can I have a motion then? Ms. Ms. Sankar? Ms. Sankar? Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair. And, um, I had seen Mr. Bartolo's hand up, so I was <laughs> thinking he was going to no, uh, do it, but that's okay. Uh, I'll make the motion. I do believe it's straightforward. I see transportation has no objections, and there is also, um, you know, um, um, I believe just a, a final page of like one supporting letter from the side neighbor. So for that reason, I'll motion to approve this application without condition. Thank you. Second. Mr. Bartolo, all in favor? Okay, uh, your application is approved unanimously, okay? Thank you, Mr. Chair, committee members, thank you. Okay, 19. Item number 19, which is 103 Patricia Avenue. Item, item number 19. Uh, yes, hi. Okay, yeah, just a second, please. Um, yeah, uh, who's that, per, uh, Parisa Amira? Kankari, uh, are you there? Yes. Okay, please state your name and address for us. Uh, hello, Mr. Chair and committee member. This is Parisa Amiri Kankari. I'm the architect on the file and uh, speaking uh, on this application. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, just a second, please. Let me ask the members. This is, uh, there is nothing here. Nobody is asking anything. There is no no letters or anything. We have six variances, they're minor. Do we need the presentation? No? 
Okay. Uh, Ms. Kankari, we, uh, the members do not need the presentation in order for us to, to move ahead. Do you still need to speak something or we can move ahead? No, I believe uh, this is very uh, norm in the neighborhood and uh, I just leave it uh, to your hands uh, for the motion. Thank you. So, any question or it can, if, if not, I can I have a motion. Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, I also believe this application is minor. Uh, upon looking at it, 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 it does meet the four tests in my view. And um, for that reason, I'll motion to approve this application without condition. Thank you. Second. Mr. Bartolo, all in favor? Okay, your application is approved unanimously. Thank you. Now we, now we have the uh, one thirty uh, session, and um, I wonder if uh, half an hour is enough. Members, we uh, we have just the afternoon session, which is supposed to start at one thirty. Is thirty minutes is okay for lunch, or do you want to have more? Uh, I think thirty I minutes think. is fine. Thirty minutes. Yeah, one thirty is fine. Very good. Thank you. So we, we, we resume the session at 1.30 for the afternoon.